Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and for today's video we're gonna be talking about Kurosagi episode 7. Now if you're new here on my channel, I basically do J-drama reviews and Asian drama reviews and other related things. Um, but whenever I do episode per episode type of videos, I usually do a playlist of them. So I'll be putting my Kurosagi playlist down in the description below for you to check out. Now with that said, so let's just get to it. <laughs> For episode 7, basically it jumps off of the plot of episode 6 where Kurosaki, finally done with the whole Mikimoto arc, is starting to pursue people who are also responsible for what happened to his family. It happens to be Hojo from Himawari Bank and so he's trying to stray away from Katsuragi's um, instructions very very recently. He do, He's starting to do things on his own especially since um, there's this realization or glaring re realization that um, that that you know that katsuragi is using him as a tool from time to time and that he really wants to take matters into his own hands and knowing that katsuragi isn't exactly letting him is kind of like adding a little bit more tension to their relationship um it's interesting to see as well that Kurosa kurosaki in this particular episode has developed a more interesting relationship with shiraishi i mean they both have very similar backgrounds as to why um shiraishi ended up as a Shirosagi and then Kurosaki ended up as a Kurosagi so both their families has been affected by um, scams as well before and they might have very different methods in in sort of like dealing with um, their own revenge but um, they kind of like form this very interesting relationship sort of like uh, confidence and, and stuff like that and it's very interesting to see how much has that developed in this particular episode as well um, Kurosaki's relationship with Tsurara has also been interesting I mean um, he invited her into some sort of like date in episode 6 but then it turns out that he was kind of just using her to to um as an accomplice of sorts into this um into this this scheme that he's working out so that he can deal with this um shirasagi that he's dealing with in that particular episode and that kind of like irked her in a way because obviously she already likes him um and he also likes her like that's glaringly obvious recently but none of them really like talked about it in a way and that particular moment kind of like made things a little bit awkward so he's trying to make small talk seeing her whenever you know because they live in the same apartment complex he's a landlord and um she's renting um in in the apartment complex that he's he's um he's renting out um so they see each other and then he try and before like he usually just ignores her in a way or she's the one who initiates a conversation but then for this particular episode he's the one doing that and it's kind of like interesting how they're kind of like flirting but then trying not to make it obvious that they're flirting it's really interesting to see how much their relationship has changed um since that particular episode uh but yeah but um, even then, like there's also this thing where Taki Takiyama, who is related to Hojo, who um, Kurosaki is pursuing, and who also confessed earlier into the episodes that he likes Turara, but then has this like shift in personality, which is very very interesting because he's portrayed as someone who's just really really nice in the earlier episodes, and then eventually, um, because of Turara's somehow change of heart and change of approach in terms of things like he suddenly flipped a switch and becomes this like really crazy psychotic type of character um confronts Torara and ends up being face to face with Kurosaki they have this like little banter between them with Kurosaki being his usual cheeky self um but it's just quite interesting to see considering that aside from the whole romance love triangle aspect thing um, their dynamic in terms of their characters and what they stand for is also very, very um, interesting to watch. And I hope to see more of their encounters in the future, especially since Takeyama is related to Hojo, who again, as I mentioned earlier, is um, someone that Kurosaki is pursuing. Now, with all that said, oh, 
before I forget, so Kashina also, um, I feel so bad for him. He gets reassigned simply because of all these different things that he's been doing to pursue Kurosaki lately. And you can see in him that it's definitely taking a toll on him. Like he's just doing this because he also has his own reasons. His backstory is really is is um is already revealed in episode six and we learn more about his motivations as to why he's so particular about kurosaki's methods as well as Shir shirasagi's in general and so uh, for him to to be put in such a position where um obviously like his actions are kind of like unjustifi unjustifiable especially in the last episodes like it's gone into obsessive mode like very Javer to Jean Valjean type of thing um but again because us viewers like we know his motivations and stuff like that I couldn't help but feel a little bit more empathetic towards him so it's kind of like interesting like where they're taking his character as well um, and it's interesting that, you know, he's kind of like developing this relationship with Sorara as well, where they both have a very complicated relationship with Kurosaki, simply because um, they kind of like understand where he's coming from. But then at the same time, um, th he's th they also have very, very different perspectives when it comes to justice and what it means and, and all these things. So yeah, again, all these different complex relationships with each other. There's also Katsuragi and also um, Kaneko who, again, like at first initially they have this like parent slash mentor-ish relationship with Kurosaki, but again, that's also tainted with a lot of complications. Um, considering that you know Kurosaki is very much aware of of Katsuragi's um, participation in what happened to his family, but then because he became his mentor, and as Mikimoto mentioned, you know, deep inside, like Kurosaki knows that Katsuragi is kind of like his new father or his new parent in a way, and that makes everything definitely a lot more complicated than it is. So even their relationship right now is a little bit tricky, and obviously like Katsuragi is kind of like pressing the power that he still has over Kurosaki in the way that, you know, especially with this deliberate connection that Katsuragi has made when it came to Torara. So all those things, again, very, very flavorful in terms of how things are going in, in the flow of things. And I'm really, really excited because, again, as I mentioned, after the Mikimoto arc, I was really, really... Um, curious as to how the pacing of the episodes would go but it's still very much exciting still filled with a lot of like um, interesting character dynamics and development into each of the relationships and apart from that so we're going to be talking about the scam that is the focus of this episode so aside from the other details that i've talked about which is more focused on the bigger narrative of the story which is kurosaki and his road towards you know um redeeming um and exacting revenge for his family each episode still has its like central scam that it highlights and then for this particular episode it's about um banks and um how like for example if if a, a person couldn't exactly get a loan from the bank or get a loan approved from the bank because of how big the sum they need is um they usually go to like a subsidiary financial institution company stuff like that and then this helps them with the loan with mortgages and stuff but that only deals with like you know them being put into like a bigger crisis and eventually like it causes them to it causes the bank to take ownership of the um, property that they mortgaged for for an amount that is more than enough of what they can initially go for. It's very, very complicated and technical. It deals with excess loans and subsidiaries and fi fi financial institutions and stuff like that, and then bank loans and stuff. So again, with this type of scam, like unlike the earlier episodes, which is a lot more easier to explain what the scam is all about, I highly suggest that you go ahead and check out the episode. It's, it's definitely, it would definitely give you a better look as to what the bigger picture is but basically kurosaki um he's trying to get involved in this particular company simply because he wants to get to hojo but then in the middle of it he encounters a family 
um, his uh, wife and um, the wife's sister who accuses um, one of the um, employees of um, the financial institution that Kurosaki was in of being a murderer and the reason for that is because the head of their family took his own life um, because of, of, of the things that happened you know in terms of their loans and stuff and yeah and what's interesting about this as well is they made it a bit modern because of how um, the scenario that affected the family is in relation to their business going under because of corona so again this is something that is very modern something that is clearly happening in in today's setup and is happening to a lot of families a lot of businesses as well and it's kind of like interesting that they also tapped into this particular um, narrative it's quite interesting because given the family dynamics it's very similar to what happened to Kurosaki as well he explained that it's very it's the very same dynamic that happened to his father um where because of of losing money from the scam that um his father participated in when it came to Mikimoto his father went to the bank and like eventually like he gets advised that this is the best way to go but then once he was there to 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 you know to like uh get the money and stuff like that so he gets informed that you know this is mortgage and loan and 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 whatever so nothing is to be left of it and 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 hojo was the one who in, involved and that like really drove kurosaki's father to do what he did to the family and um, it's the very same thing that happened into with the Nigeshi family who Kurosaki helped eventually. It's quite interesting because we see Kurosaki interacting with the family and see him acting a bit more softly in a way. Again, it's quite interesting because he gets a little bit more softer when it comes to families that are very similar to his situation, very similar to Torara's family um, as compared to, you know, more individual victims or or just um i don't know like like not not family related um victims and i think that's because obviously they make it so that it's something that he relates to on the personal level we see a softer side to him especially when it comes to the kid who is a daughter of of the family and the daughter of the father who who passed away because of the situation um and it's also interesting because he loops in one of the family members to to deal with the situation as well and it's just a very very like interesting episode to watch because again um i i i, I couldn't remember if i mentioned this in the earlier episodes but um after episode five with the whole mikimoto thing um kurosaki's off-duty wardrobe has significantly changed so the the hoodie thing has become a signature look when it's off duty because um it's very unique to him and it's very different from the flashy outfits that he's wearing whenever he's doing his disguises but then in the later episodes he kind of like changed into different outfits for his off-duty looks but then it's not exactly as different color scheme wise it's still very kurosaki-esque um but it still has to do with like a difference in, in the shift in terms of his character after the events of what happened with mikimoto um i read an interview where Shaw mentioned that he was active in terms of of helping out and deciding Kurosaki's wardrobe as well, especially the off-duty um, wardrobe so that it maintains the consistency when it comes to, his, to the character. And I do think that he's doing a really good job because it shows some sort of like consistency in terms of the character, the, the color-wise, but it also shows um, the maturity or something like a massive shift. And it's actually a bit disconcerting to see um like how his wardrobe has shifted and so in this episode one part of it like most of his other outfits in the episode has changed still but there's this one particular moment where he's back to wearing his hoodie when he was with the family and i do feel like it kind of is like symbolic or a metaphor for um him still having that old part of himself you know but uh 
but because of the family situation like it's still him being in touch with his past and what happened with Mikimoto but in the other instances where he's very detached from that like there's this new other person in him that's trying to figure out what happened to his family as well and that is very much glaring in the way that the wardrobe choices were made in episode 6 and also episode 7 um, and yeah now, overall, I have expected that this episode would be a little bit more emotionally taxing, especially given the context that it's very similar to what Kurosaki um, has gone through with his family. But I do feel like, again, as compared to more emotional parts of the episode, where um, in episodes one to five is definitely a lot more like there's definitely a lot more there and then for episode six we see him coming into terms with his own emotions and traumas what happened with um mikimoto for episode six is a little bit more level-headed like he seems to know where he's heading towards a lot more better and even his emotions when it comes to interacting with um katsuragi is a lot more controlled which is why at the end of the episode it's quite interesting to see his facade which he usually has especially when it comes to Katsuragi him not showing the more vulnerable side to him or the more easily faced side of him and then when he sees um Turara enter um Katsuragi's shop and um like even if he already knows that Katsuragi already connected with Turara earlier on and to serve as a warning to him but the realness of the situation impacting him in that particular moment um when he sees Turara and see that it's actually real that she actually is kind of like involved in his way already and it's kind of like his world's merging in that particular moment like that shift in his expression so so interesting to watch because again this entire episode he's kept his cool in a way in terms of how he was dealing with things and he's a lot more composed and a lot more like he has a lot more direction but then that particular moment just sets up like the foundation of how how Turara is to him and how we're gonna see more of that probably like relationship um in the later episodes and how much is Turara going to be put in the middle of all these things especially th since things are getting messier and messier when it comes to Kurosaki so there's definitely that um it's quite interesting as well and looking forward to the next episode because kurosaki will be playing an akasagi which is very interesting because in the 2006 version the akasagi episode is a lot earlier and also it's quite um i'm just quite excited because of the look i'm sure he's gonna play a host a very very flashy host which is very different from the look that he's been giving in this particular episode which is very nice and sleek and um, a lot more tailored in a way but then for next episode it's gonna be more flashy um and again he's gonna play an akasagi and akasagi is someone who uses emotions and feelings and romance in order to swindle someone and so it's definitely outside of his niche you know dealing with shirosagis and also being a kurosagi but it's kind of like just interesting for him to see how that dynamic would play out it also shows that there's gonna be a lot more different um, complications when it comes to his relationship with Turara um, because again as I mentioned in this episode Turara is getting more and more involved with whatever is going um, happening Takiyama is also going to have a more significant role in the later episodes again in connection to Hojo and as well as his relationship with um with Kurosaki and Turara. Speaking of, uh, I, I forgot to mention, Hojo also took took notice of Kurosaki being the one in the CCTVs and stuff like that, like doing all these things. And so he's asking his men to investigate who this person is. Um, so it's quite interesting how they're going to deal with that entire thing um, with um, Kurosaki you know, finally going in the radar against, you know, the people that he's going up against, especially since, you know, obviously, like, Katsuragi isn't selling him out, but Hojo is also involved with Katsuragi, so it's interesting how this entire thing would play out. Um, so, yeah. Now, with that said, so tell me down in the comments below what are your thoughts in, in this particular episode. Uh, as usual, I would love to hear everyone's um, opinions on the matter, stuff like that. You know, you know the drill. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you again soon in a new one.